everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Katie and today we're doing a book review this video was very kind of all over the place I didn't actually think I was gonna finish a book to be able to do a book review so I kind of thought okay I'll do another book tag and I was thinking what book tag should I do and then suddenly I'm on my train home from work and I finished my book and I thought we're doing a book review today's book review is for the final in Owen Hamilton's sequel sequel trilogy trilogy hero of the fall and when I say I've literally just finished this I have freshly just finished this yeah it's it's been a real ride with this trilogy I just can't even again I'll be doing a spoiler free section to begin with and then heading into a spoiler section first things first I cried like a small child whilst reading this and kind of annoyed that I did. One, because I was on a train, <laughs> so I was sat there wiping away tears. But for the second reason, I will say in the spoiler part because I can't give away anything. For the final part of this book, Armani has taken control of the rebellion. She is in charge, she's leading the way, and she's kind of seeing actually what it's like for when Ahmed had to do this. And um, yeah, it is almost kind of fighting a losing battle to win to they gotta go up against the sultan he has a whole army against them plus he has demji power not demji power but he has jinn power he has everything and they have nothing and they are kind of just scrambling just to get a fighting hold to get a foothold on anything it's i just i really really love this series i've loved the direction it's taken i've just think the writing of this series has just been amazing the development of characters and of the lands and of the countries and of their mythology i think all of it has just worked really brilliantly and i think it has really come together so wonderfully in the first book you know it was very much it just seemed like magic and you know the mystic ones and the original beings just kind of almost seemed like old stories and the further Armani travelled across the desert we were kind of seeing actually this magic still does exist then by the end of the second book we were literally kind of like okay magic is like a thing it is still happening we are seeing the sultan's plots what he wants to use magic for how he plans to weaponize it and then finally in this third book it is kind of like it's all coming to a head. In the last book, she had a bronze, put, uh, bronze iron put under her skin so that she couldn't use her power, and they tracked down her aunt who they got to take it out of her. Um, I couldn't quite work out if maybe all of it had come out or not because in this, Armani's power is failing her. The more she uses it, the more in pain she's in, you know, her grip is faltering on her powers. And I was kind of thinking, wait, if I miss something, is there a reason, like, why this is happening? So if someone can explain that, that'd be awesome. So I feel like I missed, like, a major part or something. But aside from that, I was kind of like, wait, what is happening? The whole story completely made sense. They are needing to travel across the desert because the Sultan thinks he has executed the rebel prince. He has not. He is secretly in hiding. He is away with other prisoners sent to a camp far across the desert, who knows where, but at this present moment, the rebellion are trapped within the Sultan's walls under a kind of like a fire dome. It is literally just one thing after another for these poor people. And it is just fighting constantly to find a new way out, to find a new way sort of to win. There is so much about this book that I said that I loved and it is true. It is so, so good. I just kind of can't believe I've kind of come to the end of it now. I'm still not sure on my rating. I'm going to say 4.5. I think. I think because of the end, which I'm going to go into the spoiler, I will explain why I think I've just knocked off that half star. Um, yeah, it's to do with the crying. There is an amazing scene, however, in this book that does involve her powers and the little illustration on the front of the book, which is just so cool. And even as I read it, I was struggling not to be on my train like, yes, come on, our money. Again, her relationships are a very much key part of these books. You know, her on-off relationship with Jin, you know, they've never actually gotten together, there was a lot of unspoken things for the two of them. But again, what I'm loving about this and the author is that the whole love aspect of it wasn't a main part of this book, it was just, you know, part of their story, but they actually had bigger things to get on with, you know, they had a rebellion to lead, they had a war to wage, stolen kisses and angry kind of huffs at each other which end in more stolen kisses which is awesome kind of 
was enough and it felt right which is something that i said for the sin eater's daughter trilogy the love interests and um how they develop felt right for the story felt right for the characters and i feel owen hamilton's done the exact same with this series they work well and i just felt it was right for the series and it was enough without it being kind of like a real oh we have to have you know the romance being the lead part of this when no like yes okay it's nice to have a little bit of romance but also it's nice to actually see that these people you know they have bigger stuff to get on with yes it'd be great to have a roll in the hay i'm sure to get out some frustration but more important things like with the previous book we have a couple of people from previous book po book books God, popping up um, in this one, which again, I wasn't surprised about. I kind of assumed at some point we would come across these characters again, which don't get me wrong, it's not like a bad thing, but I just was kind of assuming, you know, if you don't get killed off, you're clearly going to come back. But I definitely felt like the characters who are brought in, I just feel like it's all right for the story it's not kind of like oh i should bring them in because i have like a loose sorry i thought my neighbor was out there i saw over something red it was a bucket it doesn't feel like they've sort of brung them in because i thought oh i have a loose end or maybe someone wants to know what happened to this person it just felt really right for the story again like with tamid and her cousin popping up in the second book it was just really cool and in fact the fact that her cousin ended up in that situation was kind of like well she's ended up becoming the blow eye bandit her cousins ended up coming us all team up. I just kind of think it's the whole kind of, if you were determined enough to get out, there you go. I think it kind of shows Armani's growth actually, is that she's so really just unaware of other people when she was that girl from Dust Walk. I think she kind of thought that her cousins were happy just to stay there, marry off and do whatever. I think she didn't even realise that other people might want to break out. But then when it came to Tamid, she could never understand that he didn't want to and for him probably came down to the fact that he did have like the deformity in his leg and that's probably why he probably never wanted to leave dust walk he got enough hassle from the people there and his father that for him to become a holy man to have a family and to be just in love and happy with our money was just enough so i think it's actually really great to kind of see that development not only from the fact that she has changed hugely in the fact that you know no man gets left behind whereas before when she was trying to escape dust walk she was just like bah! although she felt completely guilty the armani she is now would so turn back in a heartbeat and would be like no i can't leave them behind so that progress alone but i think it's just sort of one of those things just seeing actually oh other people wanted to leave that hellhole, not just you. Um, but no, the like I said, the storytelling of the lands itself and their own cultures. You've got the Albish, which, like where she is from, have their own version of Demjis. That is something I would love to see explored more. I would really love it if she picked up a series, even just one book. Just one. I'll take one book. That talks and explains that because a character from the book, Sam, he talks about like the great love stories they have and like, the great heroes they have. Their magic is more um, elemental with, I think it's um, wind and rain, I would say, whereas um, the people from where she is, they are more um, earth-based, so you've got more fire, more earth. So it is really cool and I would love to sort of see the difference with that and the difference that they take and what they call themselves and how they become, because obviously they have jinns and then they have gems demjis which are the half children so it'd be cool to see the albish take on that um but i just thought it was awesome especially seeing another country that had that whereas the gallon soldiers obviously the whole point they were occupying was because they wanted to get rid of anything that was you know like seemed like the destroyer of worlds to do with magic i feel like i've rambled on enough in my spoiler free section thank you for joining me pick up this book it is so good I really, 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 really love this series. It was absolutely brilliant. I've said it before and I'll say it one more time. Actually, no, I probably say it once more after this. This is so unlike anything I've ever read and it was absolutely amazing. I now really want to read the, I want to say The Wrath and the Dagger or something like that, which I think has this sort of Middle Eastern vibe to it. But yeah, this has been a real eye-opener and an amazing page channel. I'm so glad I read it. Let's talk spoilers. The bit that made me cry, obviously, was the horrifying and sad bit. Actually, I didn't cry when Sam died. I managed to keep that together. But it was when they made her choose between Ahmed and Jin, and it was really sad. And the fact that she had no hesitation either because she knew it would be what Jin wanted, I just thought was just kind of beautiful. And poor Ahmed being destroyed and being like, it's fine, just take me, take me, I love him. And that moment when they tried to be together before he got poofed away it was just quite beautiful and really quite sad so i cried lots then and obviously she then died too but the reason i think i've knocked off half a star 
was I kind of felt like because obviously because they married each other without realizing it their lives were tied together so it did when she woke up it was like a kind of oh well he's clearly gonna live so it did feel a little bit like that heartache and those tears were for nothing and like it really bogs me when tv series do that when they kill off a character and then somehow they can bring it back and I'm like I shed so many tears over this and in my case on a train which you know not fun it was kind of like a nice tie because obviously they said those words but to them they didn't realize what they had um sort of said and like the impact of it it was also nice actually that moment with her father because i feel like that was probably all she was ever going to get and it was really nice to finally find out what her mother's wish for her was which was obviously just to live so that was a nice little touch that she had that moment with him because obviously he's very cold towards her he's very there's nothing there he just sort of just watches her especially when all the other gins are around there's kind of nothing there so it was quite nice to sort of sorry i've just noticed that my wallpaper doesn't match in that like small corner i don't know why that's just suddenly become my focus yeah it was just nice to have that moment i think for armani just to be like no, I, I do remember your mum. I may have lived for centuries, but no, I do remember your mother. I remember the fact that she was willing to sacrifice herself for you. I thought that was a nice touch because she was never going to get anything more from him. And I feel like it would have been wrong for her to suddenly get this weird fatherly figure who was really into it because that's just... They're so removed from the world. Yes, they're happy to come down and have a quick one, but they kind of... Because obviously we die they kind of remove themselves and go okay well you guys are fun i've done my bit but yeah like i said the series was just absolutely amazing i really want to know your thoughts and i love hearing um people's thoughts on books especially like the same ones i've read obviously and to have a really good discussion i just think the series itself has just been phenomenal kind of glad i didn't read them when they came out because i've enjoyed reading them together but part of me wishes god i wish i'd read these when they've come out because they are just so different and i really think they've actually kind of influenced some of my other reading choices however set a very high bar now for what i expect especially in sort of female leads i'm not gonna lie but um it was like a real just rip roaring just adventure and i think that's what i really liked about it it was just so different the landscape and the setting from what i would normally read so for me, I just think it was just, yeah, such like a fun little adventure on my train to and from work. Thanks for joining me. It means a lot to me that you come and you view and you say hi. If you like this video, then give me a thumbs up. It's really great. And if you're new here, then hello, hi, become a subscriber and join me. And yes, I will see you in the next video. Bye.